very good morning to everyone. It is Thursday 22nd of August. Hope you are well. Um, we're going to cover a couple things this morning. Uh, but before I even begin, I just want to make you aware that there's some very important economic data coming out momentarily. So while I'm on the mic, what I'll try and do is cover this off as we go through things. But you've got the Eurozone flash manufacturing and service PMIs. These will be very important for European prices this morning. I would be anticipating uh, reactions in things like the Euro, uh, European equities, so the DAX, the Eurostox and the Bund. So do keep an eye out for that. It's coming up the French figure first at 8.15, followed by the German figure at 8.30, the latter of which will be particularly important. Why? Because this is a look at the graphic of German manufacturing PMI. And the last reading marked the steepest decline in overall manufacturing conditions in Germany since mid-2012, as new export orders dropped the most in 10 years Falling sales to China, slump in the automotive sector, more concerns about the ramifications of uh, hard no-deal Brexit, and so on. And so what we've been seeing is quite a severe contraction, deterioration consistently in German manufacturing, which is obviously very key for their overall economic output, but not just for them, but for the overall Eurozone area. And so this is going to be particularly important. Um, the number for Germany on the manufacturing side, just so we're all up to speed, is expected at 43. So actually, a slight further deterioration from what we had last month, which was 0.2 above that expected figure. The range 41.5 to 44.5. If we get a 41 print, where does that put us? Well, we're going to have to start looking at a 10-year at a chart. That puts us through the trough that we had in the height of the European sovereign crisis with the multiple bailouts of some of those countries like Ireland, Greece and Portugal, that puts us back down to levels we really haven't seen in the best part of a decade uh, since the severity and fallout of the financial crisis. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, that's coming out, as I said, at half past eight. The French figure will come before, um, in about three or four minutes' time. The manufacturing from France expected at 49.5, so right on the cusp, minor contraction. The service sector um, to remain in slight expansion expectations, 52.5. So that's coming out, and I will cover those when they are released. But otherwise, looking at the, the overall broader markets this morning across different asset classes, um, things fairly quiet, and I've been looking at you know just various um, volume profiles, and this whole week has been relatively tame, particularly in the fixed income market for the U.S. This is all because everyone is waiting for Friday's very important speech from Jerome Powell. As you can see from the charts, there really wasn't any, and definitely no sustained reaction other than a momentary blip in prices on the back of the FOMC minutes last night. Now. Just a quick look and the reason why these are the kind of headlines that people are running this morning, if I just transition. So three reasons for cutting in July. Remember, the reason, one of the main reasons that people didn't really react to the minutes is not just because Powell was speaking on Friday, but the date of those minutes was from 30th to the 31st of July. So they're about 23 days old those discussions and obviously the world has moved on in those 23 days there's been new emphasis on the inversion of the yield curve there's been new economic data that's come out new speeches that have been made so essentially rendering those minutes just redundant they, they just really weren't that interesting at all the only one thing I think that was potentially slightly surprising was that there were two members who wanted actually to go for 50 basis points not 25 but that in itself, not enough really to move markets. So not going to dwell on the, the minutes, really. Going to move on, talk about a few other things. One thing you can see on the charts here is dollar index pretty flat. There's no real dollar strength, let's say, for the moment, albeit it's holding on to the gains that were seen last night. One thing is you are seeing a little bit of pound weakness. Cable just edging through you know, some of the low points that were seen yesterday afternoon. Uh, so cable's down about 16, still you know, relatively moderate in its losses, though. Nothing sizable. But obviously, a lot of the talk at the moment is in the run-up to the G7 happening in uh, Baritz in France at the weekend. You, know, you had Boris Johnson doing the European rounds. He was in Germany yesterday meeting with Angela Merkel. And 
what came out of that was some fairly positive noises, actually. Um, EU officials, though pessimistic, said there was still time for a deal. Um, interestingly, Merkel said it's up to the UK to put forward a workable alternative to the backstop. Uh, the UK Prime Minister agreed. He said the onus is on us to solve the border issue, though he pointed to measures that have already been dismissed for the last three years of Brexit talks, included the Truster Trader Programme and electronic pre-clearing of goods. So uh, essentially this kind of technological solution in order to keep an open uh, border uh, like without checkpoints and so on, which could then invoke the memories of the or breaking the risk of breaking the, the peace agreement brokered in the late 90s. So problem being, I guess, with that last point, although Merkel has been relatively positive, that's always been the case. Germany definitely much of the mindset that they want to um, uh, dis avoid at any cost, really, further disruption to what, e what already is an economic challenging period. I'm um, just going to pause for one moment. The French numbers have just come out. Just seeing a big pop in the euro on the back of that. So let me just see if the score... 51 spot 8. So that's all three there and beating on expectations. The manufacturing and expectedly an expansionary to their trade and as such have seen an uptick in euro dollar towards 1 at 10.90. So just coming on, yeah, Euro popping, DAX popping, uh, boom to the downside, so a very positive number. The French manufacturing PMI has just come out 51. That is way above the top end of the most optimistic estimate on the street. So immediate bid into the Euro and DAX on the back of that, certainly alleviating what has been very depressed um, kind of uh, sentiment around the growth happening in Europe at the moment so particularly strong numbers there out of France uh, the actual service number 53.3 also considerably higher than expected as far as the deviation from the mean for, for the PMI data so decent numbers Germany coming out obviously in 14 minutes now but this is going to be quite interesting uh, given how much people have been panicking and obviously that's put emphasis on the fact that the ECB have got to do more, they've got to cut the deposit rate, they've got to restart QE. Uh, but if the PMIs have hit that low now and start rebounding, that would be definitely interested to see whether or not the euro then will start to, in the medium term, claw back some of its persistent losses. All right, just going back to um, what I was saying here, the point I was going to make on the Brexit talks was that everyone is still at the same sticking point that Theresa May is. It's all to do with the Irish um, border, the backstop. But the problem is, as much as Merkel has been favourable to potentially, look, we want to work to get a deal done, Boris is only bringing forward things that have been discussed before, which have already been dismissed. So unless he comes forward with something new, some sort of maybe legal twist on the understanding of what this backstop means or entails, then I really don't see this changing the game at this point in time. Um, the one thing that's definitely going to be happening today, of course, is that um, Macron, <laughs> quite good timing for Macron, of course. The PMIs have just come out really strong. Uh, and obviously, one of the things that Boris would have been wanting to leverage is that, look, I'm going to threaten no deal. Your economy is suffering. And so, you know, this, this data maybe is a, a, a nice little boost for Macron going into those face to face discussions later on this afternoon. But. All that aside, France is a, an absolutely different beast to Germany. France has been way more critical and definitely less um, friendly in the idea of giving any type of concession to the UK. The French government, they said last night they expect the UK to leave the EU without a withdrawal agreement. That is their baseline scenario that there will be no deal. And so at the moment, he's not giving anything away. So I think Merkel was of no surprise to hear a kind of more conciliatory tone yesterday, more interested in what Macron has to say and what then Boris and Trump do at the weekend when they meet up in France at the G7. Um, very interesting comment, though, from Boris Johnson that he made uh, in his own kind of usual, fairly descriptive way. He said, in my life, I've watched a lot of European negotiations and believe me, it looks at first as though it's an irresistible force, an immovable object, and what, in my experience, happens is people find a way through at the last possible moment. And I absolutely agree with him. I really don't think, from a trader's point of view, 
um, you're going to get this really big, massive pops in the pound because you know we're going to come out of the G7, and I think that there's going to be exactly where we are at the moment. I want this, they want this, and there's no pressure of a deadline yet. It's too far away for people to start cutting deals uh, and making concessions. So I'd expect all of this to manifest into potentially medium term some weight in the pound as we get closer to still the same status quo as we get through to the end of September into October. Then it gets a little bit more interesting, certainly if we retest the lower bound of those um, historical low levels in cable. All right, a few other things just to quickly uh, go over but one thing Chris quickly back to the charts the DAX loving life now after that surprisingly strong French data just keeping an eye here on uh, the previous range high from yesterday uh, we've just moving the charts out here I'm just gonna put it on a 60 minute you can see this is the top end at the moment of quite a considerable uh, range of resistance that we've been trading over the course of August for sure so if I just put a rectangle over some of the price action here and where we are in the near term as the first challenge you've got here 11, 8, 10 and then 11, um, 8, 45, 49 on the upside which would be the kind of the bound of the price action that we've had here over the course of August. So some interesting levels, certainly a surprise development there in France to see such strong data. The manufacturing one, the standout services also exceeding expectations as we just saw. Okay, wrap through the other headlines. Uh, it's almost as if the market's gone quiet on the Chinese yuan. It's almost as if you know we had such. You know, well, start from the beginning. It's amazing how markets can be so blinkered at just looking at one subject at a time. And I, I often mention this to people who are new to markets when I'm explaining how do you perceive kind of daily market sentiment and how do you. Um, assign a hierarchy to the macro themes that are in play but you remember about three four weeks ago top, the only thing that you needed to do to really trade the open was what was the fix for the Chinese Yuan now no one even mentions it in fact the Yuan fixed overnight at its weakest in 11 years and it's gone you know we're, we're moving further above seven at this point the only thing is is there's a trade war going on uh, and then the headlines come out. Then there's an aversion of a yield curve and people start getting spooked about a recession. But even that in itself has now almost dissipated and moved to the side. So we get the next thing. So it's interesting how definitely I think to, to manage the macro environment, you've got to be quite agile to really pick up on your perception of how the, basically the market is perceiving its value on these types of subjects. Interestingly now, I think about this chart of the yuan is that people seem to have got over this psychological symbolic level of seven which people were absolutely panicking about that it would lead to mass capital outflows and so on that hasn't happened and the yuan continues to weaken uh, which has prompted state intervention through their uh, state-owned banks overnight so definitely warrants continue to watch to watch if we obviously punch higher to 7.1 we're not quite there yet we got close to it I think we actually touched it last night um, if we start going higher and higher yes this will become a problem but at the moment uh, the point being it's just quite interesting how this is a development that really hasn't changed but it's just that people have been distracted by other issues but quite like Italy for example it flares up and then it goes away the yuan issue is not resolved and will come back in time I am sure Okay, um, that is it from me, actually. I'm going to hand you over to Sam because we want to make sure you guys are all over the, the German PMI when it comes out shortly. So in terms of a calendar for today, let me just bring that over to quickly run through. I think my computer, one of my pages is frozen, so let me just talk you through instead what it is that we've got. So on the calendar, You've got the, the German figure coming up. The Eurozone manufacturing PMI is obviously the summation of these countries. will be at 9 o'clock, but that's very much just confirmation rather than anything new in information at that point. You've then got the ECB minutes. Do not forget about that. That is coming out at 12.30. Um, that could be interesting, particularly given the, the, the fact that even though these data points have come out strong, otherwise it's been a fairly precarious situation for Europe and people are looking for hints of 
near-term action from the ECB in the form of deposit rate cuts of 10 basis points and the potential restarting of QE before year end. So those minutes will be definitely of interest and market moving. Into the afternoon, the US weekly jobless claims. Um, you get the market service and manufacturing PMIs flash reading as well from the US at 2.45. European consumer confidence at 3 p.m. Jackson Hole Symposium does kick off actually today, but Powell doesn't speak to tomorrow. So although we can share the agenda for who's on the docket, really the big one is not until tomorrow afternoon. And then, of course, French President Macron meets UK PM Johnson. I believe that's happening later on this afternoon. All right, I'm going to transition my screen, hand you over to Sam. I will post the German numbers as they come out into the chat room so you're aware of them as soon as they're released. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah, thanks, Ant. Um, I guess we start with the, the euro here, just as obviously we've got those numbers coming out in five minutes to the second now. Uh, obviously, you'd expect after seeing the good French numbers that the German and therefore the European ones as a whole are going to be pretty good. Uh, obviously, just above where we're trading uh, would be pretty important going back to yesterday, which couldn't get above there. Couldn't get above there at all, 111.30. Uh, and it's, you know, a bit above there, you've got the that uh, overall range that we were looking at from yesterday and talking about just how that could uh, hold price in and to the downside obviously that double bottom as well bringing up this new mini range for the euro back above what's been a pretty important line in the sand you can still see we've got those rectangles drawn up from the previous um, briefings and again yesterday that held pretty well <laughs> again this morning uh, so that's your line in the sand 111.11 uh, above there perhaps we're favouring to, to buy up towards the top end of these ranges and below there where we can start to drift down. Uh, as well, looking at this longer term, I don't know if this is drawn up as such, this daily chart one. But you can just see, <coughs> looking at the last few trading days, just starting to perhaps look to get squeezed in both directions. So where we're getting this new uh, range, squeeze from the high and the low, as well so you know much like the pound in a bit of no man's land maybe the euro and uh, the dollar side of things here just waiting for a move either way for uh, a test of the the yearly low which of course we had at the uh, beginning uh, of august or back up towards some of the the higher levels around 112 which was obviously so key going back just a, a few weeks ago moving over to the pound and i've only really got one point marked up here uh, which was, well, you see Anthony's got it on as well. Around 121.20 was pretty important level going back to the last few days, uh, certainly on, on Tuesday and Monday uh, as a key point and, and previous days around there with price section. Uh, as we perhaps just move up towards the, uh, the pivot as the dollar has weakened thanks to the euro there, uh, we are just almost coming in to make, maybe make the third test of that trend line higher the day. So that would be quite quite, quite key, 121.50. Uh, but much like the euro, as we said, we are uh, perhaps in a bit of a choppy range and just drawing on these potential trend lines uh, from that yearly low, uh, any dollar strength, looking for, for those to break. Top end of the, the range, all important uh, as well for this week, around 121.89. So three key levels, I would say, to focus on the pivot, uh, obviously the R1 and uh, yesterday evening's highs is, is, is as well. 121.89 highs of the week and then that trend line uh, from the, the low as well coming in. Gold, a market that as well as perhaps euro and pound getting getting squeezed from both ways and actually just as we speak, gold is coming to test, I believe, if I draw this trend on, the lower part of that from that spike we had last week. You can see just tempting to, to break through that uh, and then from the upside as well you can see over the last few days uh, as well not the, necessarily the third test but getting squeezed and gold is having a look at trying to to pop to the downside obviously equity is pushing higher off the this european relief uh, if you like so money just coming out of safe havens albeit uh, briefly uh, so just keep an eye on there and gold it's obviously some key levels to the downside around the s1 and uh, the previous lows from the week which would be obvious targets and then the top end of the range over the last couple of days around the r1 so a lot of markets just waiting perhaps for some impetus either way to really uh, get 
a move. Moving over to equities, you can see that spike in the S&P really has come from the DAX and Euro stocks. Um, we're just now above that trend line uh, that has been tested. You can see over the last sort of few sessions, a bit choppy on the, the way through overnight. But where we obviously finish the, the day will be important. Can we confirm a break above or is it a false break? And actually we start to drift lower uh, as well. It'll be interesting to see what, what happens there for, for S&P. Above where we're, we're trading, obviously the higher the day, but all important, 29.45 area, some key resistance around there, around with 29.56. If we can close the week above 29.50, I think the psychologically 3,000 comes quite quickly uh, as well as some of these previous lows. Uh, that we had in the market uh, before those breakdowns. So really important end of the week. Can we get above that trend line? We're pretty much trading right on it now. To the downside, uh, I think you'd, you know, for the bears to really get excited, while a fail, a fail break would be if we can get back down uh, really below yesterday, you'd say sort of afternoons lows, it'd be pretty important. Those headlines, the, the figures have just come out. So have a quick look over at the euro to see how we have uh, reacted. As you can see, they're already testing up to the R1 as they have come in better uh, than expected. So worth keeping an eye just here, obviously above the R1, you've got all those highs from yesterday. And then if we were to get a pop through, uh, the real key level around uh, the uh, important uh, highs of the week. So just keep a, a close eye on that. That line in the sand, you'd be happy staying long as long as it's above 111.11, 11, 11, uh, really. Um, not, well, the manufacturing coming in 43.6, so better than the expected. The services also better, 54.4, the expected uh, 54 there. Uh, so better than expected. You expect the, uh, the Eurozone ones uh, at 9 o'clock to also be so. Quick look over at oil. Um, you can see yesterday the, we did move lower uh, and that trend line therefore has broken uh, and I'm just going to continue this trend line on from where it has been drawn and you can see pretty much will be a messy break we then did find resistance on that later on so still have that on maybe just to, to drag a bit higher for any potential uh, for it to come back and retest it broke both ways yesterday and both times on the first retest acted as good um, well resistance and support so I still have that trend line on but perhaps euro uh, oil now just looking a bit more bearish than it did 24 hours ago pivot looks very key today a lot of price action around there 5614 to the downside the lows that we had from the 20th and s1 also uh, an important point to have on the DAX is loving line I'm now above yesterday's high and that's the highest it's been really going back to the levels we had marked up from the 13th, which are massively important here. Euro stocks and DAX loving low. Likelihood is it's going to drag the S&P uh, and the Dow and the Nasdaq higher as well. Uh, equities all over uh, gathering pace. As you have seen here, gold breaking lower, T-notes lower, and the Bund, of course, uh, the main mover to the downside. So very much now a case of being risk on uh, following these positive European numbers. Can we get a confirmation in 30 minutes? Uh, if not, expect a reversal of these moves. Euro up to those highs uh, and the high of the, the week or the last few days very much on the cards. Hope you'll have a, a good trading day, good session. Uh, and any uh, questions, please do let us know.